Ladies and gentlemen, it's one minute past ten. It's Threshold.fm. It's Facebook. It's YouTube. It's all across the flat earth. Would you all please take a second to place your hands together and join me in morning prayer. As we praise to you the great dub plate on high, blessed be our bass lines and cantankerous be our rhythms. Give us the strength to double drop the nine into anything we see fit and make all of our MCs call for the rewind be legit. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever, Trey Man. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Coffee and Memes. Steady job, a couple extra potatoes, that's all I want. You're getting on, you're pushing 30, Slubby. You know, it's time to think about getting some ambition. Well, I always figured I'd live a little bit longer without it. Don't forget, kid, that what you're trying to do here is to be bright and chipper and entertaining and, and intelligent and sort of glitzy, and that's funny, and it's, it's, it's kind of cool, and it's interesting, and it's edgy, and all of that. It, it puts that facade of momentary charisma on you, and if you don't play that out, you actually fail. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Coffee and Memes. Oh, my Auntie Commie mug is full of lemsip. I'm full of cold. I am here in I am here in body. Well, I'm here in spirit. Well, I am body. I'm just uh, I'm I'm not here in uh, respiratory system. I would say my cold has seems to be working its way down into a full on chest infection. I'm going to tell you now. I'm not sure if I'll be here tomorrow. But I will motor on through the show today. Perhaps we'll play more music than normal. Uh, and being that I, I don't know, sound like I've got something up my ass and up my nose. It's not good, man. It's not good. Lobsters. But we do our best, don't we? We do our best. Um, how are you all today? You on Facebook. You on YouTube. You on Threshold.fm. If you're listening on just Threshold.fm and you want to chat, you can get, you can join our Discord. Uh, how do you find the link for the Discord? That's a good question. It's in the YouTube description on the live YouTube video. Uh, that's a thing. Uh, otherwise, I don't know, man. I don't know. Uh, I was about to say that I'll post it in the Discord, but... Hey, it's in the uh, Threshold Lobster Crew Facebook group, okay? How about that? That's enough. That's all right. That's public service information out of the way. Um, there is... Um, sorry, bear with me one second. Yeah. Um, there is um, various uh, well, dead bases in the app today. Look, I can see them all notifications come up when you post in the Discord, and I can see what you're all saying. Um, they're all being very nice to each other. Lovely, decent, honest, God-fearing folk. Everyone's being so nice to each other in the Discord. It warms my heart. Like, it's actually uh, making... Yeah, it really is warming my heart. We have a uh, mental health thread in there, and... People are talking about stuff they're going through and everyone's helping each other out and people are sorting their acts out. People are like, right, well, I'm going to take stock of my life. What's, go what's going on here? What is, what is good? What is bad? Let's try and change the stuff that is bad. Let's, you know, I'm going so to get fit. I'm going to get healthy. I'm going to do all of these things. And they're doing them and everyone's like, yeah, this is great. And everyone's like, and they're slightly holding each other accountable and like, and they're making suggestions and, they're, you know, it's brilliant. It's I'm I'm so amazed. You're you're all wonderful, and it is uh, warming my heart every day. Wait, what have we got in terms of news? This is this is the big news, boys. This is the big guns. We're rolling out the big guns first. New sex toy has been created to let you live stream footage direct from your penis. Yeah, yeah, you know it. <laughs> Uh, bricks don't roll seems like an appropriate background noise to live streaming direct from your cock. Yeah, this is big, man. This is, um, wow. Yeah, this is going to be a thing. Um, here, here it is. Uh, that's, um, wow. Uh, yeah. So it looks like a sort of cock ring that presumably has a camera on it. Finally, I cannot believe this has not been invented sooner. Uh, the, how was, how have we been able to get? To this point in in human history, without the ability to live stream directly from a sort of peen eye view, you know, a peen's eye view, 
I mean, look, we put a man on the moon. Well, so they say. We've, um, you know, we've cured many of the infectious diseases, although they're back on the rise. Uh, we've, you know, we've uh, huge, huge swathes of technological advancement and medical advancement, and yet it's taken until 2019 to invent the live streaming penis attachment. Oh, because it's taken so long. Uh, it's called the cock cam, unsurprisingly. And uh, Amelia Ward from the Loud Bible reports, reports, reports. In an evolving world, all industries need to keep up with the times, and the sex toy business is no different. Step forward, this odd, how dare you, new creation, which lets you record and live stream footage from your penis. All the while, uh, you're getting uh, intimate. So, oh, are there any pictures of um, actually what the sort of sort of footage you can... Um, capture because what i'm saying is guys uh if you can wear it right on the end because oh, the lot i mean is it going to look a little bit like when they put cameras on dogs and you can just sort of like on the top of the dog's head and you can just sort of see its nose just bobbing up at the bottom of the camera uh because if you get a sort of little bell end island at the bottom of the shot yeah maybe not but if it sits more at the front like a, a top of the bell I mean, it can't be too heavy can it otherwise I don't know. I don't know how strong, I don't know what sort of poundage I can lift, you know? Is that going to compromise the, um... Yeah, anyway, look, what I'm getting round to is that if I can get it to sit right on the top so you don't actually see any of my peen during the live stream, I don't see any reason to not have one on during the entire show that I could get occasionally cut to as a sort of nice cutaway angle. Maybe there could be some stuff going on underneath the table that maybe you'd occasionally get shots of. Like, nothing sexy... Nothing weird, just maybe, I don't know, there could be hamster in a cage running on a on a little hamster treadmill, and you might get a shot of that occasionally, or just um, a sleeping kitten. You know, something nice, something light-hearted. Something, you know, it's a horrible world out there, and to have a little light-hearted thing like that, just cut, cut in and out every, every, every few seconds, I do think that that would be, that would be rather delightful. Well, look, I'll look into it, guys. I think it's a good use of um, threshold funds. I think it's a good use of Patreon dollars. I think everyone will agree on that. Uh, but anyway, look, let's get into this. The Cock Cam, which retails at 160 notes, not bad, or 122 quid, actually, uh, is essentially a camera that attaches to your privates. It's embedded uh, onto a comfy silicone ring. The product is compatible with all water-based lubricants. Hmm. And sorry for the too much information, but was also designed to hold blood in the penis, which facilitates longer lasting erections. Double win. Wow. Maybe I could get them to rebrand it as a sort of threshold uh, merchandise item. Let me know in the Discord, lads, if that's of interest to you. Um, bringing it truly into the 21st century, if you've got an integrated Wi-Fi connection, which means you can live stream to a mobile, tablet or laptop. Hey. Uh, beware, though, it shows your Wi-Fi settings as the cock cam uh, with the <laughs> uh, with the standing. Oh, oh, right. I see it with the asterisks uh, standing for the code of your specific camera. So it's not exactly the discreetest of usernames. But then again, if you're planning to live stream your internet, intimate moments to the world, then you're possibly not that fast. 720p HD quality. Not bad. I personally, I I'll, I'll do like to stream in 1080 if I can. But uh, 720 will do. Product has a battery life of 90 minutes. So I'll get the whole show out of that. That's pretty decent. Um, uh, the product, yep, product has a battery life of minute, uh, a battery life of 90 minutes. So for most men, uh, that's about 90 different sexual encounters. Not bad, is it? Uh, the weird sex, if weird sex toys are your thing, we also came across these Game of Thrones themes, what, themed ones. Uh, which include a phallic game of moans, long shaft. Nice. See what they did there. Uh, yes, that's an actual name. Dragon egg vibrators and even a direwolf looking tail butt plug. Uh, it's probably a step over the line for my conservative sexual values. Um, sorry, I, I have to cough off air again. I apologize. You know, I, I look, you can make the decision for me. Like, is a, a a show a poorly show, a sicky show better than no show? Because there's a, definitely an argument to say that no show is better, but you know, it, you know, I'm I'm paid to be here by you lot, so I'm I'm doing my best. Um, you might have to make the most of your shiny new cock cam though. 
uh, as it could be about to get a lot more difficult to access porn online. Well, I'm going to be charging people to tap into the stream of this. And uh, I just, I mean, what, what do you think? Pound a month or something? And to get sort of unlimited, <clears throat> unfettered 24 7 access to Rankin's cock cam for, for, for a pound a month. You know, that, that's not bad, is it? That's, uh, I mean, the price of a movie ticket or a, a half a pinger. You know, it's not bad, is it? Hey, you think of the, talking to pingers. Mm. Oh, slams it's doing nothing for me. I've taken pretty much every over the counter cold cure available to man this morning. Done nothing. I was thinking, like, you know, pingers, yeah. <laughs> you know, you've heard of them. Take one of them. 40 minutes later, no matter what illness you're currently suffering from bubonic plague, hemorrhoids, uh, measles, mumps, rubella an hour from boshing a pinger. You're not sick anymore. <laughs> You're cured. It's a, it's a miracle wonder drug that should be available on the NHS. I mean, often, the cure is only temporary. About five or six hours. But uh, after that, I'll, I'll, just get, I'll just get these notifications out of the way. Um, a whole host of... Oh, right. Oh, yeah. So, anyway, now they just... This is the point now where they just regurgitate an older story to pad it out. Anyway, thanks for that, uh, Amelia Ward. That's uh, very kind of you to report on that, and I will order one later today. Uh, cheers, Cock Cam. And yeah, let me know if you want threshold branded ones. Right, let, let's play some music. Uh, this is called Cycles by Icicle and pff, someone else. <laughs> Maybe just Icicle. Icicle and Alex Perez. Alex Perez. Hi, I'm Alex Perez. You can find me on such hit record labels as Shigan Audio. <laughs> Not hanging, I love it. Seems the consensus in the chat is that if I am physically capable of doing the show, just fucking well do it. <clears throat> I'm inclined to agree. Others saying if I don't do the show, then the communists have won. Then we can't have that. guys you're gonna have to start ponying up on the super chat if you want any more clothes to come off this is a funky little number isn't it
year. This is Icicle and Alex Perels. It's called Cycles. Bicycles, menstrual cycles. Um, I don't know. Yeah, it's on... Couldn't they tell you? Anyway, mums to make porn. They'd be happy for their kids to watch. <clears throat> uh, well, all right. Yeah, bless them, I guess. Uh, I think they... Um, they're your cheeky porno mummies. <sighs> right, come on, let's get into it. Mum's disgusted. Mum's disgusted by online porn. Made a film containing sex that they would be happy for their kids to watch. Oh, mum, don't. <laughs> mum, please. Oh, my friends are going to kill me. Mum, don't. Oh, can you imagine? Can you imagine how mortified their kids must be or are going to be when they're old enough to realise what their mothers have done? Like, oh, there's so much wrong with this. Like, I, it's, okay, look, it's just, I can't wait to watch the program. The five women taking part in Channel 4 show Mums Make Porn uh, first had to research hardcore films that could be accessed by, by youngsters online for free. Okay. Mum of six, Sarah Louise, was so traumatized that she threw up. Um... And 40-year-old Sarah cried seeing graphic rape-based content. Yeah, that's pretty grim. That's, no one needs to be watching that, uh, adult or child. Yeah, I mean, this is... Yeah, I, look, I appreciate their point, like, that children are can very easily access the most horrible, harrowing uh, pornography. I remember seeing some... Oh, God, I remember seeing some back in... I don't know, I was in my early teens. Stay, stays with me. So this, oh, not, it's, just, yeah, I, it's not, look, I agree, it's not good. I just don't know whether or not them making porn is going to help because unless they've managed to find some sort of backdoor to the internet whereby they can reroute all porn requests to uh, their sort of mumsy, lighthearted, you know, curtains drawn under the covers uh, sex, uh, I, then you know they're just all they're doing is making additional porn that's probably not good anyway we'll, we'll carry on uh she said if that was the first time i'd seen anything about sex i'd be petrified correct i just thought all of a sudden i was going to throw up well did you it says you threw up earlier actual vomit but then it says you just thought you were gonna we need to show kids that there's something else uh than this horrible shit we see on the internet she added, if my son treated a woman like that, I would kick his ass to kingdom come. Okay, so violence towards children is probably not the answer. Just going to put that one out there. Um, like, I think that, you know, slightly serious note here. Porn for children is not benefiting anyone. It's not making any, either gender, feel good. It's the, you know, the girls feel conscious about what they should look like and things they should do the men feel conscious about their penis size their you know ability to perform the length that they can perform it's a fucking disaster for both for both sexes and uh yes porn does not like again obviously they only focus on the female side the mums but it uh porn doesn't represent normal women no it doesn't represent normal men either the men are all jacked and weird looking and have enormous schlongs. Like, the normal men don't look like that. Uh, they need to realise it. It's not normal. Yes, correct. Uh, another mum is so disgusted she quits. No, suck it up. Make the mum porn. Come on. Uh, the, fil the film the mum's made will be shown in the last of the three-part series. Uh, starting on March 20th, as they hold a viewing party for friends and family, including some of their children. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that the porn that they make will not show close-up penetrative sex. I'm just... I, that's... I'm, I'm going to put money on... Do you reckon I can put money on that? The bookies? Go down William Hill? All right, Will. Uh, it's Will. All right, Will. 
Uh, I want to put a bet on. Cool, what do you want to bet on? Hey, you know these mums on the Channel 4 thing? They're going to make a porno. Yeah, I've seen that. It looks like a ridiculous idea. Yeah, well, anyway, can I put 20 quid on their porno not showing penetrative sex? And particularly them not airing it on on, on the show. Uh, yeah, all right, I'll give you uh, 15 to fifteen to 1, 1 to 15 odds on that. Right, so you're telling me I have to put 15 quid on to win a pound? Yeah. All right, it's 30 quid. Is that it? Uh, Channel 4 exec, Sarah Lazenby said, we're proud to put parents in the director's chair. We are proud to have mothers directing pornography. Brilliant. Nice one, girls. Uh, looks like you've got this whole whole thing sewn up and uh, children will be like, mm, now, I want to access online pornography. Uh, you know, just see what it's all about, really. Uh, what am I going to search for? Um, uh, mum... Mum porn suited porn su effectively what they've done is they've made porn suitable for children. That's what you're doing, isn't it? Is that good? Is that a cool thing to do? Yeah, no, we've made porn suitable for children. Right. Okay. I mean, wouldn't the ta I mean, look, I haven't seen the documentary. I'm just spitballing here. But wouldn't the point? You know, shouldn't the point be rather than like this is stupid. It's appalling. I'm I'm not impressed with this. Like, wouldn't a smarter move just be to try and tighten up how easy it is for children to access pornography? I mean, the, the fucking genie's out the bottle now. It's, uh, I don't know what the solution is. I just don't think that mum's making child-friendly pornography is it. Correct me if I'm wrong. Let me know in the comments, yeah? Like and subscribe at the bottom. Let me, yeah. Make sure you hit the bell for notifications. T tell me what you think. I don't fucking know. I, I don't make the rules up. Thank God. Thank bloody God. Anyway, here's mob tactics. Mo more like mom tactics. Am I right? <laughs> Lobsters. Yeah, this will do.
Yeah, that's drop out by Mom Tactics. Well, Mom, please, your tactics, they're too unorthodox. Don't make, please don't make a porno. Mom! They think they're trying to help. They're so misguided. It's their kids are going to get bullied at school for this. Well, this is a disaster. I, look, I appreciate they're trying to help. But, I mean, look, if they make porn that ac- accurately represents what sex between married couples who have kids is like, that will not only put children off sex, it will put them off having kids. It'll just be like two, two parents in bed, like in horribly ill-fitting pyjamas, of sort of washed out t-shirts and washed out pajama bottoms of some sort of awful like polka dot or gingham print like the dad's in like some like i don't know like rush 1997 tour t-shirt and they're in bed absolutely exhausted from chasing around their vile children all day and uh we, I guess we have, when did we last have sex it's like two weeks ago two weeks now we should shouldn't we yeah no we should yeah oh, i'm knackered though yeah i know me too well look just try let's like, just try for a, a quick one all right yeah okay and then like the mum's just sort of just a little bit just sort of shimmies down the pajama bottoms and the dad d- doesn't even take his doesn't even take his boxer shorts off he just uses the little sort of trap door at the front gets a sort of approximately manage manage a, approximately workable boner and they just like <clears throat> lie just by lying on their sides <clears throat> like fish until i i don't know i don't even know if anyone comes it just sort of falls out and they both just probably just fall asleep midway through and kids are just looking at it like oh that's what i've got to look forward to if i get married and have kids is it pathetic forget it forget it i, I one might stand for it it's making me feel worse. Um, right, come on, let's get rid of that. Uh, vegans killed two piglets during protest, farmer claims. Um, don't know about, don't know why I could be bothered with that one. Uh, plane forced to return to airport after mum forgets baby uh, in departure lounge. It's probably toxic femininity, isn't it? Uh, Facebook has a bright mode and it's destined to be controversial. Jasper Hamill here, no shares on this one. Sorry, mate. Uh, what the hell is... I don't even know what dark mode is. So like many other tech firms, Facebook is working on a dark mode for Messenger and its other apps. Uh, but it's also rumoured to be developing a bright mode for its main app, which is the opposite of the current trend for darker interfaces. What? Hamill, like, what is this? What is this sorry excuse for a news story? Look, I appreciate you're locked in the basement at the Metro with the with the bosses who were owned outright by the Daily Mail coming in flogging you with a cat of nine tails while you're chained to the desk churning out this turgid guff. But come on, man. When apps are made less bright, they put a lower demand on the device's batteries, meaning they run longer, which may even help prevent eye strain. So it's surprising to hear that Facebook is working on a redesign of his Android app, which will actually up the whiteness rather than reducing it. Get your act together. It's appalling. What's that one? Oh, yeah, it's been a while. Uh, the new UI for Facebook for Android app gets rid of the prevalent blue accents and adopts a much whiter look. It's probably racist as well, isn't it? Uh, wrote XDA developers, uh, which uncovered the feature. The main app header loses the... Why am I even reading this? Why am I even indulging Jasper Hamill's bollocks? Again, every day. This is like an abusive relationship. I keep coming... Every time I'm like, why am I doing this? But you know, no, t- the next day I just come back for more, don't I? He tells me he loves me, buys me flowers. I just come back for more of his turgid guff. Hamill, that's it. We're done. Me and you are through. Like, unless you've got some decent Elon Musk news, we're finished, mate. We are finished. Uh, what's the, what? We come on. Uh, this incredibly simple maths trick is blowing people's minds. It's, it's fine. All right. Yeah, this is a bit of um, bit wild. Um, Builder storms pub with revving chainsaw during drunken row. Do you think he's Eminem or something? A builder who got involved in a bust-up in a pub car park. He's having a tear up in a car park. Uh, stormed back into a boozer with a power saw. He's been jailed for two years. It's not... You can't. You just can't storm into boozers with chainsaws. It's, it's not really a goer. 
Like, you know, if you think about it, like even if you've got a real beef with someone, just talk it out, man. <laughs> just just hug it out. Don't go steaming into a boozer with a chainsaw. Come on, man. Let's just talk it out. Andrew Dickin, uh, Drew Dickin for short, uh, who said he, he'd only had one pint, left regulars at the Bull's Head Hotel in Sale, terrified after swinging the potentially lethal tool indiscriminately around the bar. Maybe he's just a... Um, is he a tree surgeon? What's his shtick? Uh, people screamed in horror, understandably, as the 37-year-old stalked the pub with the whirling petrol-powered saw. This is a nicely written article. I like this. Who's this? Nick Brunetti. Well, Nick, I hope you... Um, I uh, hope you are smart enough to try and just nudge Jasper Hamill out the out the door, and you could take over his tech position. Oh, okay, yeah, he looks. Uh, I don't know if he looks that chainsawy. Um, he looks like he might work at cash converters. Horrified customers were heard yelling, "He's got a chainsaw!" Uh, Jailing Dickon, a judge. Oh, another Dickon. Yeah, Jailing Dickon, a judge said. It was a miracle nobody was hurt. Following the incident, Dickon drunk into the early hours when his ex uh, went to his ex-girlfriend's house, smashed her car windscreen, and threatened to blow our house up while our children were inside. Um, <clears throat> sounds like a rough evening for everyone, really, doesn't it? It's, uh, it's obviously pfft, poor chaps, obviously having a bit of a breakdown, I think would be a, a fair assessment of this. Thug was jailed for two years having earlier admitted a fray, threatening a person in a public space with an offensive weapon, criminal damage, and sending a threatening message. Um, Minshew Street Crown Court heard Dickon had been drinking at the Cross Street pub with a friend on the evening of February the 9th. He said he had been involved in a row with a group of men before being assaulted in the car park, the court heard. Construction worker Dickon then walked to his car, opened the boot, and grabbed the tool from his stash of tools. Feels like he's sort of having a bit of a Michael Douglas falling down moment. Um, where he's like, right, okay, I'm going to burn this motherfucker to the ground then. And I'm going to go to my car, get my chainsaw, and when I come back, you're all for it. Dickon was filmed walking up uh, a small flight of stairs to a seating area before approaching those inside the pub. Uh, the saw can be heard over people's screams. Oh, yeah, look, there's a video of it. Sorry, I've, you know, been cock-teasing you there. Yeah! Oh, Jesus. Wow. Well, I mean, props to the guy filming. Like, he's really getting a scoop on it, isn't he? Like, he's running after him. Gee, and he... Oh, man. I, <laughs> I would not fancy trying to take down a guy with a chainsaw. I don't understand. What? Like, people are, like, kind of going around. I'm like, oh, look, all right, look, look, mate, come on. Just run. Run. Get your loved ones and run. Uh, throw stuff at him, throw tables, throw chairs, throw, I don't know, pint glasses at him. Wouldn't that be a, a get, keep a distance. Seriously, keep a distance. You're going to want a chair. You're going to want uh, a smaller human to hold in front of you. Human shields. No, not human shields. Christ. Well, he's been sent down two years. Um, hope he gets the help he needs. Damn. That is uh, an um, yeah, it's an unfortunate evening for everyone. I think we can all agree on that. Uh, right, is gunpowder by Break?
no chain. I 100% would not pull guard on someone with a chainsaw. Anyone else, though, I'm pu- pulling guard straight from the outset. Right, Threshold, finally, we've got some stickers. If you're a supporter on Patreon, make sure you've logged in and added your home address, your postal address to your Patreon account. It's later in the week, I'll be sending packs of stickers to all Patreon supporters for free. If you're not a, a Patreon supporter, you can still get stickers for free. <clears throat> All you got to do is help Uncle Rankin out with a with a bit of promo, bit of promo for the show, bit of promo for Threshold. Just get on your social media, do uh, promote the show however you see fit, tagging in the Threshold Facebook page or the Threshold Instagram or the High Ranking Instagram. Tell the world, tell the world that you're a good lobster. Take some screenshots, email them to me, well at threshold.fm with your address, with your home address, and I'll send you some stickers. Seems like a fair deal. Other stickers getting sent in a similar fashion to Clayton's book. Uh, well, I will be taking the stickers, inserting them into an envelope, uh, closing the envelope, and then putting a stamp on it. I'm going to then transport the envelopes en masse to the nearest post box, and I will be individually posting them into the post box where the Royal Mail will then deliver them to you. But they won't take three months. In other Patreon news, if you're supporting on Patreon and your name's on the VIP list, you can now log into Patreon and connect your Discord account to Patreon, which will give you access to the special VIP lounge in the Discord, uh, where basically the real shit's going down. And not only that, makes your name green. That's worth the entrance fee alone. That's gunpowder by break. Uh, I sort of talked incessantly over that, so sorry about that, but, you know. 
fucking life, isn't it? Mums are making porn, bloody cock cams, <laughs> bloody ill. Um, look, right, what else have we got? Uh, do 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 do. Strangers, twenty nine and thirty two, stunned passengers with new romp on Exeter, Exeter bound National Express. I personally have always found the National Express uh, to be an extremely erotic experience, even while travelling alone. Uh, there's something about uh, the 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 smell of the seats, the just the se- the drivers are often very sexy. Uh, the uh, just the general vibe on the National Express bus is just horny, don't you think? Am I alone in this? But you know, I mean, I, not on the scale of say a mega bus. I mean, that's basically just twenty four hour rompathon. But I mean, the National Express is certainly a more classy romp. It's a more sort of a um, bit more seductive, a bit more sensual, you know. Whereas like the mega bus is a bit more straight to the A. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Okay, good. Well, anyway, we'll get into this. The coach had to pull off near the M... Uh, uh, wow, okay. The coach had to pull off the M5 uh, near Collompton and park on the hold, hard shoulder before police arrived. Wow. God, these strangers just romping. A brazen man and woman reportedly stripped off and had sex. I like that they've put sex in capital letters there. This is uh, again a lot of news from Devon Live at the moment. They are a real source of just bollocks. Um, so perfect for coffee and memes. Uh, had sex in front of passengers on a National Express coach that travelled along the motorway through Devon. The nude romp happened after 10 p.m. Well, at least it wasn't in the middle of the day, I guess. On Monday, March 4th, and the pair involved had met for the first time on the near 10-hour long service from Manchester to Exeter. Well, Lee, you got to do something to pass the time, haven't you? And you might as well have a romp. You might as well commit a lewd sex act on a bus. You might as well. Uh, Devon and Cornwall police say they caught up with the uh, infatuated couple after the driver screeched the bus to a halt on the hard shoulder of the M5 near uh, Collompton. What a um, cop block. A 32-year-old woman and a 29-year-old man were arrested and taken into custody. Is that really necessary? Uh, the jaw-dropping incident stunned passengers who had bought tickets to ride the service, not to ride a cock. I presume that's where they were going with that one. A spokesperson said, Police were called to an incident of public indecency on a coach travelling on the M5 near Collompton at 10.40pm on Monday, March the 4th. Officers located and arrested a 25 year old a 29 year old man from Bristol and a 32 year old woman from Barnstable on suspicion of an act of outraging public decency bah, bah, bah. Um, they were later released under investigation pending, pending further inquiries uh, they should have made him shag at the police station to prove to prove it no <laughs> I don't know. Spokesperson for the National Express said, uh, we are aware of an alleged incident on board a vehicle travelling between Blackpool and Plymouth. I thought he was travelling between uh, Slinging and Exeter. Didn't it say? Manchester and Exeter. A 10 hour long service from Manchester to Exeter. And now the police statement says Blackpool to Plymouth. What's going on here? Devon Live, you two bit hacks. Hey, what's going on? Is this fake news? We're uh, oh, here. We are aware of an alleged incident on board a vehicle travelling between Blackpool and Plymouth on Monday, the fourth of March, twenty nineteen, and will assist the police with any further investigation. So, who's wrong here, guys? That's the spokesperson for the National Express. Mm-hmm. the National Express. You can get out your cock and get it sucked for free. Um. Okay. Well. If that's an accurate quote, Devon Live, you are wrong oh, about the 10 hours. All right, come on. That's what, what else have we got? I've, um, this, uh, I'm, I'm, in, I'm in no mood for nonsense, uh, having uh, feeling the way I, uh, I do today. Uh, right, come on, sticking with Devon Live. Uh, <laughs> video shows alleged Royal, Royal Navy sailors vile sex act in Cornwall pub. It's been quite a sexy episode uh, today, hasn't it? Video uh, Warning. The video filmed inside the Red Lion pub in Helston 
allegedly by sailors from RNSA, RNAS, Cold Rose, may cause offence. It's, uh, well, being that they have basically blurred the entire thing, it's not doing anything to anyone. Look, here it is. Well, the whole thing's blurred, and then they've got an eight ball over the action. Right, okay, I believe that was a man saying, spit on my effing arsehole. Which they then bleeped out. Anyway, look, let's get into the story, because it's a good one. Uh, uh, God, it seems quite long. <coughs> uh, a video has emerged showing... Look, I'll give you the bloody... I'll give you the T TLDR of this one. Some sailors. You know sailors, they... They're, they're grotty buggers. They, they, they're, they're saucy sods, aren't they? They're, 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 they're mucky pups. They, um, oh, they, oh, they, oh, they, they make your hair curl, sailors. You know, all, all, <laughs> they're all on a boat together for all that time away at sea. Yeah, you know, you've got a lot of time to kill. You, 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 you push the boundaries. Anyway, these sailors, right? They're in a pub. And they're larking about, and uh, they film. One of the sailors attempting to insert an eight ball into the puckered anus of one of the other sailors, uh, while all the others watch on and laugh. Uh, the man uh, pulling his cheeks apart is uh, sort of shouting encouragement and commands about how best to get it in there. Um, all a bit of a hoot. Anyway, uh, the video does does the rounds on facebook uh and th they claim as do the pub that the whole thing's been blown out of proportion and i think it's made to look like they were actually doing it for sexual gratification rather than for a bit of a hoot nevertheless um you know probably best not to be inserting uh pool balls or in fact really any objects into your uh, anus in full view of the rest of any pub um that's that's the coffee and memes position uh best leave things um, best best leave bumholes alone in in public pubs. I think is probably a good rule to stand by. If uh, you need to do any sort of bumhole work, that's probably what toilet cubicles were for. Probably, I presume. Anyway, the video uh, as it makes it look a bit light-hearted, but the press came to the pub, and the pub said no comment. And since then, basically, it has been. Uh, the pub said, everything that has been said is exaggerated and basically guessed due to the fact when a freelance reporter came into our pub and asked for information, we said without a second thought, no comment. We're extremely unhappy that this newspaper has decided to take it upon themselves to fabricate large parts of the story. <laughs> Start feeding the eighth ball into your anus. Uh, we would like to make it clear that we are a public house and Helston as a town has a very close relationship with the cold rose and the Navy personnel. And I think it's awful that this article is attempting to tarnish that reputation they uphold. However, the video, which has been sent to Cornwall Live, shows that their actions certainly qualified as indecent, as well as extreme and inappropriate in a public place where families gather. In the one-minute footage, you can hear sport on the TV in the background and the men's colleagues laughing as one man attempts to insert an eight ball into the, into the, uh, an eight ball from the room's pool table into the backside of another. The man makes several attempts while the second man is bent over with his trousers around his ankles. Their friends watch and laugh throughout, occasionally covering their mouths in disbelief. The man who is bent over repeatedly shouts instructions uh, to his mate as his backside rubs against the pub sofa from which the other man is leaning over. The man who is bent over can be heard laughing throughout the length of the video. Uh, the, <laughs> the background is easily recognisable to visitors to the pub as the room upstairs. Cornwall Live has decided to share the video due to conflicting reports of the event and a lack of verified information from authorities who would not comment on the specifics while the investigation is ongoing. Yeah, you've shared the video, except it's you can't watch it. You might as well have just shared an audio track. It's good, like... You're pathetic, Devon Live. You two-bit good-for-nothing hacks. I'm appalled. Half one won't stand for it. Right, now, talking to bumholes. Um, this is twerk it. By Tantrum Desire. Uh, it's the one which has the artwork that looks like a sort of giant space anus. God bless him for it.
Odin Bates has joined the Green Gang on the Discord. Amongst the other green boys. There'll be green girls in there soon enough. That said, I think Jen might be the only girl on uh, Discord. Oh, and Lily. Just a couple of gals. Just keeping it real. Jen definitely deserves a special mention for commitment to good news. She's keeping the good news and inspiring news thread alive. I commend her for it. Uh, right, guys, listen. Uh, yeah, oh, well, I've still got five minutes left. I mean, what, what else have we got here? Um, God, this Dev and Live have really rubbed me up the wrong way today. Going to be honest with you. Going to be honest with you. Uh, Conor McGregor's been arrested again. Uh, Conor McGregor has been arrested in Miami. Police have arrested McGregor, alleging he smashed a fan's phone at the Fountain Blue Miami Hotel. Uh, the Miami Herald says uh, the fan was trying to get a photo with the UFC star before McGregor allegedly threw it to the ground and then jumped on it several times. Hmm, dear. Sounds like uh, <laughs> what Khabib did to McGregor in their last fight, am I right? <laughs> Uh, McGregor is reportedly being charged with strong-armed robbery, <clears throat> a misdemeanor criminal mischief, and friends owning an officer. Damn. The arrest report says the victim... The arrest... <clears throat> Sorry, I'll do the Miami accent. Hi, we are the victim and the defendant were exiting the uh, Fountain Blue Hotel in that lake, and a victim attempted to see a picture of the defendant in that lake with his cell phone, are we? The defendant slapped the victim's phone out of his hand, causing it to fall to the floor. The defendant then stomped on the victim's phone several times, fucking damaging in that lake. He's done it an absolute fucking wrong end. The defendant then picked up victim's phone and walked away with it, thus depriving him of it. <coughs> victim stated the phone is valued at a thousand bucks. The defendant was located and arrested. Oh, Connor, what have you gone and done, you silly bugger? Oh, I'm sure you'll get off. By just paying him a bit of money. That's how it works. Police using CCTV footage to back up the complainant's claim. Uh, McGregor was arrested at a property later that day and taken to Turner Guilford Knight Correction Center. He paid his bail and was subsequently released. The fighter's Miami lawyer... Samuel Rabin said in a statement, My client was involved in a minor altercation involving a cell phone that resulted in a call to law enforcement. Mr. McGregor appreciates the response of law enforcement uh, and pledges his full cooperation. This is the latest running with police uh, McGregor has had, uh, with him dominating headlines last year for his violent outburst with other UFC fighters in New York City. MMA fighter journalist Ariel Hawani, uh, who was at the scene, oh, relayed the alleged, what allegedly happened. Okay. McGregor and the members of his team showed up at the Barclays Centre. At the very end of the media day, moments away, there was an altercation with some departing fighters who were competing on the card. Oh. Um, he wrote on Twitter, I'm told people who were in the van that as the van was driving off, they started banging on windows. No, this was this is what happened. Yeah, the Barclays Centre's in New York. This is a, from... <sighs> Stuart Perry, this is from a different incident. That is not the same... Ariel, yeah, Ariel Hawani would have been at the other one because it was a press day. Have you conflated the two things? Oh, it's just very badly followed on. Okay, he's out, outburst at other UFC fighters in New York. You've not made it clear that... Oh. I just walk in, play like the sickest sets. People just go nuts. Right, guys, it's the end of the show now. That's it, I've had enough. Come on. This, to, I... Do you think if um, if ever there was a sort of disease or condition or syndrome that is caused by dreadful journalism, I'm likely to be patient zero. Just this, just it's like in uh, it was in Stuart Lee where he's talking about was he talking about Channel Four or uh, he's talking about some TV station, but it's basically like having a huge tube of hot steaming sewage pumped straight into your face. <laughs> he just opened the valve. <laughs> Kind of like that. But, you know, someone's got to do it, haven't they? Uh, you know, it's not much, but it's honest work. Uh, right, look, guys, thanks very much for listening. I'm, fingers crossed, look, fingers crossed I'll be back tomorrow. 
if I'm really in, if I'm really in a bad way though, it's 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 not gonna happen. I I, I feel it's annoying, yeah, because it's just sort of painful from here up. But like, I don't have any loss of energy. I don't seem to have too much loss of uh, cognitive ability, or I do have some loss of patience. But you know, uh, if if I'm physically capable of doing the show, I will. Damn it, I will do the show. Um, thank you very much to the VIP list. There's everyone who is supporting on Patreon for $10 a month or more, keeping this crazy train on the tracks, keeping this dream alive. If you want to support the station, you are very, very welcome to, and I'm unbelievably appreciative. Um, you will get your name read out at the end of every show, and you would also get your name listed in the new version of the app, which is going to be out in a month or so, uh, under the founders list. So you will be a founder of Threshold's new app and kind of threshold as a whole, really. Uh, you will join the ranks of Oliver Hooper, Nicholas Gonclaus, Tom Ryan, Reese Mosson, Squidgy Beats Parsons, Paulie Hutton, Kieran R, Michael Kaczynski, Matthew Tompkins, Dave Long, Joel Potter, Carl Murphy, Sam Howard, Tony J, Richard Patterson, Jack Murphy, Tom Cam, Stephen Harris, Matthew Bullard, Zara Pickle, Jer uh, Jerome Van Thunderbutt, Mike Pye, Anthony Walker, Lily Unsub, Richard Franks, Thomas Hall, Chode Ryder, Andrew Hyderabad, John Finnison, BDR Crew, Peter Blatchford, Austin Grief Cooper, Genesee Light, Phil Ryan, Glazer, James Parry, Dave Thompson, Hendo Bartendo, Lady Squiffington, Liam, The Menace Underwood, Dan Fucking Morris, a guy with no STDs, Justin Mercer, Ames MC, Josh Williams, Rob Humphrey, Shibby T, Coco Shiva, Dan Elton, Tyron Wilmore, Mr. Pope, Dark Progressive Psytrance is actually superior to drum and bass, Nicholas Lawsey, Damon Rayner, Chris Breaks, The Build, uh, Carissa Barthelson, Odin Bates, and Lee Fuller. Thank you so much for your donations. You are wonderful people. You're all wonderful people. Everyone who listens is wonderful. Um, I've noticed that some people on the list have changed their name in Patreon to humorous names. Uh, but I don't have a record of what your name was before you changed it to the humorous name, so I don't know which name to change in the list. Um, also, Dark Progressive Psytrons is actually superior to drum and bass. Have changed it to I sell drugs on the dark web. DM me for details. Bitcoin's accepted, which I don't I care. <laughs> which I like your. That's clever. I like it. Very nice. Um, but I think I might. I'm potentially drawing the line at that. Uh, I, don't know. <laughs> uh, I think there was a film. Someone changed this to film a crack and other various bits and bobs. But look, if you're going to change your name to something stupid, you just have to send me a message and let me know because if your email address is something random not associated with your name, I'm not going to know who it is. So, um, yeah. And look, if you're supporting on Patreon, please log in and add your uh, your postage address because then I can get it all in a nice spreadsheet and it's very easy. And then I will be sending out other free stuff in future, maybe by surprise. Uh, so I can just send it to you. It'll be a nice little present. Christmas cards, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, but yes. And also, you can connect your discount, Discord account to your Patreon and get access to the VIP lounge where the real shit is going down. Oh boy, you would not believe the parties, the fast car, the, the women. Oh, it is crazy, this VIP lounge. It's like a sort of digital uh, velvet rope. Um, it's a backstage area. You can smoke tabs in there. You can do drugs in the open. It's cool. You know, it's all right. Um, look, I love you. Uh, fingers crossed I'll see you tomorrow morning at 10. Look, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to do my podcast with Dylan, King Cannibal, tonight because there's just no way that I can talk like this for two hours and uh, on serious topics and it, it'll it just ruin the whole thing, basically. So I'm going to reschedule that probably for next, next week. Um, but, yeah, and all things... <laughs> All things considered, if I'm feeling better tomorrow, Lady Scrivington's going to be on. Uh, just join me, just hang out, chat. But if I'm feeling rough, probably be later in the week. Anyway, look, I love you all. Goodbye. Goodbye.